Okay, before we talk about how to configure remote administration, let's first deal with some of the background concepts. When we're talking about managing remote Windows servers, what we're talking about are different ways to hook into the same programmatic interface called WMI, that's Windows Management Instrumentation in the Windows OS. WMI can be used locally through scripts or remotely. It's just a way to control the settings on a Windows server or any Windows installation with commands. So there are two ways to deliver WMI instructions over the network. The first method is WinRM. In the Windows Server interface in Windows Server 2012, this option is just called Remote Management. This is the default option, and in Windows Server 2012, it's actually enabled by default. It's based on an industry standard called WS Management, and it's FF, which means firewall friendly. The downside is you get pretty much only basic administration through WinRM. The other protocol you can use to manage remote servers is DCOM. DCOM is a much older technology that's proprietary to Microsoft. It's very complex, not at all firewall friendly. Now, there are always more layers of complexity, but this is generally the status of things today, and it will get you properly oriented with respect to these technologies. Now, here's the first thing you need to know about WinRM. Computers running Windows Server 2012 are enabled for WinRM-based remote management by default. And in fact, it works automatically in a domain environment, provided you have administrator privileges. Now, the scope of this course and of the 7410 exam is only domain environments, so you don't have to worry about the fact that it doesn't work by default outside of a domain environment. I should add, that's pretty complicated to configure, too. But in a domain environment, WinRM-based remote management enables the following. PowerShell, that is PowerShell to a remote computer. Server Manager in Windows Server 2012, that means you can connect to a remote computer with Server Manager. And the WinRS command. That's a command that lets you execute another command on a remote computer. Again, the thing to remember here is that in a domain environment, WinRM-based remote management is already enabled in Windows Server 2012. So let's go over some more details about WinRM. First, as I said before, WinRM is a remote management protocol that's based on an industry standard called WS Management. Incidentally, Microsoft contributed to the creation of the standard, but it worked with other tech companies. Another thing to know about WinRM is that it runs as a Windows service. That means you can see it in the Services Console. There, you can see it as Windows Remote Management. Another thing to know is that WinRM can be configured with the WinRM command. Really, it's a utility. But you can use this WinRM command to configure all sorts of details about WinRM. And finally, WinRM communicates over HTTP or HTTPS, but it uses different TCP ports than is usually used for those protocols. It uses 5985 or 5986. To see which ports are being used, you can just type WinRM enumerate WinRM forward slash config forward slash listener. So let's go into the user interface and take a look at WinRM. We're in the minimal server interface, and I want to show you a couple things about the WinRM protocol. First, let's look at the service. We'll go to Tools, Services, then we'll scroll down to Windows Remote Management. Here we are. We can also see it's running. Let's close out of here. The other thing I think you should see is the WinRM utility. Let's just type WinRM forward slash question mark. You can see there are a lot of options to configure. So here, let's type in this command, winrm enumerate winrm config listener. OK, we can see that it's communicating over port 5985, and it's using the HTTP protocol. Another thing you want to look at here is this word listener. A listener is like 
a little program or a bunch of code that listens for WinRM instructions over the network. You can have more than one listener, but a listener defines the protocol on the port and the IP addresses that it will be listening on. Now, as I said, one advantage of Windows Server 2012 is that remote management is already enabled by default. But if by some chance it gets disabled, you can re-enable it. And believe me, you need to know this for the exam. There are actually a few ways you can enable or re-enable remote management. First, you can use Server Manager and just enable the remote management setting. But as you probably know, that's way too easy for the exam. You can use the sconfig utility. Another option in Windows Server 2012 is that you can use the configure smremoting.exe utility. Use the option enable. You can use the WinRM utility. Specify the option quick config or QC. And finally in PowerShell, you can use the enable PS remoting commandlet. So you can see there are a lot of options. And you should expect to see some questions about this, at least one question about this on the exam. OK, so let's quickly move over to Server Manager and let me show you where you can enable and disable the setting. OK, here we are in Server Manager. I'm going to click Local Server. And you can see it's right here, Remote Management. It's enabled by default. I haven't changed that setting. But if you wanted to disable it, you can just click it and clear the setting. OK, one reason you might want to disable remote management is if you wanted to prevent anybody from being able to get into your server. But for now, we'll just keep it enabled. So what we've talked about so far is managing Windows Server 2012 remotely from Windows Server 2012. That's the context of where remote management is already enabled. So Windows Server 2012 was designed to make remote management easy. However, remote management, or what was called remote administration in earlier versions of Windows Server, this WinRM-based version of remote management that we're talking about was not enabled by default in earlier versions of Windows Server. And the underlying technology wasn't simplified to the degree it has been in Windows Server 2012. So we've got two things to do if we want to enable management of older Windows Servers from Windows Server 2012. First, update the remote management code so that I can speak cleanly to 2012. And two, enable remote management. For the first of these two steps, we need to install .NET Framework 4 and Windows Management Framework 3.0. You can download these off the Microsoft website. And believe me, you definitely have to memorize these components for the exam. For the second step, enabling remote management in older servers, you can run these two lines in Windows PowerShell. First, set execution policy remote signed. And second, configure SM remoting PS1 force enable. You might see that on the exam, but there is an easier option. You can just type WinRM quick config at an elevated command prompt. An elevated command prompt, by the way, is a command prompt that's run with administrator privileges. So we've talked about how easy it is to enable remote management. So let's take a look at how easy it is to do it. The most obvious thing you can do to remotely manage a server in Windows Server 2012 is use PowerShell. Many PowerShell commandlets include a computer name option. For example, install Windows feature DNS computer name SV3. That will install DNS on that remote computer. However, it doesn't always work. For example, you can't say restart computer and then specify a computer name. You can use the get help commandlet in PowerShell to determine whether that particular commandlet has a computer name option. Here's another way to remotely manage a computer with Windows PowerShell. Use the commandlet enter ps session, then use the option computer name, and then specify the name of the computer. This will essentially give you a Windows PowerShell prompt on the remote computer. And from there, you can run any command list you want. Now, just as a reminder, you can use this for all domain joined remote computers running Windows Server 2012 without any configuration. So that's a pretty nice new option in Windows Server 2012. OK, we just talked about how you can remotely manage your servers in Windows Server 2012 using PowerShell. 
But in Windows Server 2012, there's another option for remotely managing your servers. You can use Server Manager. Server Manager is a more convenient way to manage remote servers, but you have to add the servers you want to manage first. You can add the servers easily if they're already domain joined. And that's a condition that you can assume on the exam. Once you've added your remote servers to Server Manager, you can perform a number of functions, such as adding and removing features and opening a PowerShell prompt. The next thing I want to say is this Server Manager communication over the network is based on WinRM. So let's take a look at how that works. Here we are in a GUI installation of Windows Server 2012, and I want to show you how you can use Server Manager to manage remote computers. First, let's open Server Manager. Go to Manage, Add Servers, then type in the name of the remote server you want to manage. Here I'm going to enter the name of a core installation of Windows Server called Core A. Here I'm going to enter the name of a core installation of Windows Server named Core A. So we need to select it and then add it over here. I'm going to click OK. Now on the left side of Server Manager, you can see that there's a section to manage the local server and another section to manage all servers. Here's where we'll find Core A. One thing you can notice is that it says, Online Performance Counters Not Started. To start the performance counters, just right click and select Start Performance Counters. Now let's look at what other options we have with Core A. We can add roles and features to Core A. We can restart it. We can configure NIC teaming and we can open Windows PowerShell. We can open a remote desktop connection if that's been enabled. Computer management, though, requires a little bit more configuration that we'll talk about later. For now, let's open a Windows PowerShell prompt. You can see at the start of this line here that it says Core A, so we know we're on the remote server. But everything we type here is just like typing at the local server on Core A. We've already seen how you can use Windows PowerShell and Server Manager to manage remote servers. Now I want to talk about another way to manage remote servers, and that's with the WinRS command. WinRS is a simple concept. It's just used to execute a remote command at a remote command prompt. It's based on WinRM, and to use it, you just use the R switch to specify the name of the remote computer, the name or the IP address. Here's an example. WinRS hyphen R colon my server IP config. Let's take a quick look at that. Okay, here we are in a server core installation of Windows Server. I'm going to use the WinRS command to find out the IP address of another server called WinServerB. WinRS hyphen R colon WinServerB. Then just the command IP config. As you can see, you get the same results running this command as you would if you were logged on locally on Server B.